Going back to this idea of the expert novice divide, what are the coaching tools that are most disruptive of expert novice divide? One of them is what we call actively observing practice together. And this is a very powerful tool. A coach and a teacher would enter into a space together to observe classroom life. And there's a couple variations around this that I'll talk about. Let's say, for example, that an early career teacher has a partner teacher and they're able to step out and go visit the partner teacher. So they're watching the same students that the teacher interacts with on a daily basis, but the novice teacher is now in an observational role. And so during a pre-conference, the coach and the novice teacher would decide together, we really want to focus on this particular student and how they engage in learning in this activity. Or we want to watch for what sorts of teaching moves the teacher makes when, um, when students have uh, misunderstandings of the material. So we decide on what we want to watch for, and then we watch together and we write down all the things that we see that relate to our questions. And then afterwards, we have a post-conference where we share our observations and debrief around what we saw and noticed together. And so in this situation, the coaching um, happens through modeling, um, modeling how we watch and how we observe, how we put our attention to students, how we notice, notice students' strengths and their assets, how we notice how teaching moves are related to student moves, and we notice conversation in the classroom. We notice what's happening. And so we do a lot of modeling as coaches in those kinds of situations. We also set up a, a bit of trust through that because the teacher that we're watching gets a sense of how we're going to be watching practice when we watch them teach. And so that is, um, you know, shifting attention to students, noticing student learning and engagement, identifying teaching strategies that are powerful, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of the teacher to know that that's how we're going to watch. And then we can also model ways of reflecting on practice together. So we can ask critical questions. We can ask questions about the work that the students are doing that inquire around how equity is actually playing out in the classroom. So we can ask questions like, what were the opportunities for the teacher to show students that she was teaching to them as individuals and humans and not just teaching the curriculum? Or what are some of the ways that students' diverse identities um, were drawn upon in this lesson? How were they able to show what they know and what their prior knowledge is? And then another strategy that's similar to actively observing practice together that helps us to enact these caring and coaching practices that honor teaching and honor teaching strategies is shared inquiry. Shared inquiry, um, like actively observing practice together, takes the attention away from whether the teaching was good or bad or right or wrong or effective or not effective, and instead brings our attention to a question that we have together about practice. So an example of a shared inquiry question would be, when I change the books that I use for reading lessons from the scripted curriculum to books that I know will reflect my students' lived identities and experiences, how will their comprehension change? How will comprehension be supported by using books that are culturally relevant and responsive? So that is an open question. It's not a question that we necessarily know the answer to because every classroom is different. Every group of students is different. And so if that's a, an authentic question that a coach and a teacher have together, then they can do a series of observations and try things out and reflect on what happened to see if they can figure out what are the right books to use to support students' comprehension. Are some books better than others? Are long books better than shorter books? Is it better to use a chapter book where the students get engaged in characters and plot and theme over time? Or is it better to use shorter picture books where we can do the lesson in one day and we can sort of start and end the story together? These are open questions that we can ask together in shared inquiry. And then the coaching again comes in watching together. What did we observe happen when we tried this new thing, when we use this new book? Looking at student artifacts together, looking at the work that the students are doing, looking at conversations that the students have, how their oral language is developing in relation to these different texts. So shared inquiry is another one of those coaching practices that is very disruptive of the expert novice divide because it does not assume that we're coaching for one particular set of practices, but instead we have an open set of questions we can explore together. 